stuff. Okay. This is in stock now. It was coming soon. We put it in stock uh, while we were on uh, hiatus. The ESP32 C6 Feather is now in stock. I know some people signed up. Pick one up. Our Feather format now with a chip that does Wi-Fi, BLE, and 802.15.4, um, otherwise known as Zigbee compatibility. It doesn't have native USB. It has like the USB serial converter built in, um, but it does run CircuitPython. Good Arduino support, although um, Matter interfacing for it is still in progress. You have to use the ESB SDK uh, to do that. Um, Stem QT port, boot and reset switch, NeoPixel, um, separate uh, low dropout regulator for the NeoPixel and QT port. I think the quiescent current is like 16 microamps check the product page but it's like it's like 20 microamps or less it's very good for low power usage so i think this will be great for home automation um batter sensors because it, of course you can do wi-fi ble or 802.15.4 it's kind of like this wide range of uh, connectivity available um at a very good price the c6 is a, is a great deal compared to the s3 series it's uh, also got a risk 5 core processor um, four megabytes of flash, but no PS RAM. The C6 mini modules don't come with PS RAM. Um, but like I said, Arduino and CircuitPython support are looking good for this. New All right. Part, so it's back in stock. Next up. Um, next up, we have a couple of USB hubs. Uh, this was actually an old design. I started with a, a different chip. Part charge made it impossible to make. Um, I did a different chip, and then someone emailed and said, hey, that chip actually sucks. And I was like, okay, so third time is a charm. This is the CH334F, right? Three, yeah, 334F uh, from WCH. Nice little chip. So this is a four port hub. Um, if you want to embed a hub into a circuit where you don't want USB ports, like making it big and chunky, we just give you the data, power, and ground lines for uh, four connect, you know, four separate peripherals. It just looks like a hub. I think it's MTT compatible. I know some folks uh, care about that. Nice big capacitors. LEDs to let you know which ports are enumerated. Um, USB-C for the uplink. And then if you don't want to use USB-C, we also have four pins at the bottom for the host port. So, you know, basically you can turn any product into a hub, um, especially if it's internal where, you, you know, you don't necessarily have USB cables on everything. Oh, it's just a plug and play. Already. Uh, you also have even more compact, a two-port version. Um, so, you know, you want to make your keyboard into, uh, you know, also have an internal USB device or something, or you just have a compact um, single board computer setup. You want to have you have one USB port, like on your uh, <clears throat> uh, Raspberry Pi Zero um, W uh, single board computer, and you want to have um, two devices instead of one. Um, this port will take one port. This hub will take one port and make it two. It's the same chip, because honestly, it was just easier to use and cheaper to use this chip than to find a specialty two-port hub. Um, so it's basically half the size of the four-port version, uh, but it still has the mounting holes, uh, LEDs to let you know which port is enumerated, and uh, USB-C uplink. Alrighty, next up. Um, okay, so um, making more USB breakouts. This is a USB-A port so this is like the thing that plugs into your computer but it's special um as you see here normally you have like that white bar which means that you can only plug it in one way but this has a little thin red strip and this, it's a circuit board so you can actually plug it in either way so no matter which way you plug it in it's correct you're gonna save years of your life months hours um so yeah it's, it plugs in either way which is it's flippable this is actually really good because if you have um, a design where depending on the hub, you want it to face outward always, but sometimes the ports are like reversed on the hub or the connector or the power plug, like, it, you know, you don't always have it pointing the right direction. You can just flip it over. Um, so it's a nice little breakout, has mounting holes. We give you, you know, the standard USB 2.0 pins, power, ground, data plus, data minus, and shield if you want to connect to uh, the shield. So it's the same price as a normal USB A port, but it's flippable. So, um, by request, we have our, you know, a little USB PD um, dummy board. You know, you plug it into a USB PD power supply and you give different voltages. This one, you don't have to use I squared C or do any soldering. So you see this little demo. No, um, oh, sorry, the previous one. 
where um, Jelly's switching each switch so you can go from 20 to 9 to 15 um, to 5 volts without having to do any soldering. You just flip the switch. Maybe you can go to the this image because I can show it. So on the right, do you see that little dip switch? And there's a dip switch for 5, 9, 12, 15, 18, 20. Select which voltage you want the output to be, flip that switch, and that's what you're going to get on the terminal block. Um, there's also a power good LED. Uh, there's a static QT port, so if you do want to like do dynamic on the fly changes, it'll always do whatever the switches say first, and then you can kick over I squared C and configure it. Terminal block comes pre-soldered on, and then um, if you go to this, somebody asked for an off switch. So there's a little there's two pads, and then when they're shorted, it will disconnect the output. So it's like, it's not, a, it's not an inline switch, it's like a signal switch. Um, and it will disable the pass transistor, so you can easily make an on-off switch. Um, just be aware that it's closed to turn off and open to turn to keep on. Okay, next up. Um, we have the full breakout version of our RS-232 level shifter. Uh, so you're doing retro technology projects, you want to connect to a device and control uh, RS-232 signals, but of course those are plus minus 6 or plus minus 12 volts. Um, this is a DE9F uh, socket to your logic level um, of all nine pins, or eight pins because one ground. So DCD, receive, transmit, DTR, DSR, RTS, CTS, ring. So those are the standard uh, eight pins, and then there's one ground pin on the nine pin connector. There's also a pin um, valid, which will go high when it detects that it's connected to something that's like a valid, you know, it's creating a valid voltage because it's again, the voltages have to be plus or minus six volts. And so the valid pin will go high when it's the peripheral you're connecting to is valid. And um, the off pin will tri-state all of the outputs when pulled high. So. Um, that's handy. What's nice about the, this modern one compared to the Max 232 I'm used to is you can control it with, um, sorry, you can power it with three to five volts. So um, it has a little boost and inverter circuit built in with the capacitors. You just give it three to five volts and you will get um, proper RS-232 transceiver up to 250 kilobit per second. And I think it has plus minus 15 kilovolt protection on all the lines. So uh, excellent for connecting to any um, RS-232 serial device. Next up. Uh, speaking of USB PD, this is a USB PD cable that you can connect uh, USB-C to a you know, travel charger like this. Um, this cable will give you 5 volts, 5 amps out, which is a little bit weird because you're like, well, isn't the default output from USB PD 5 volts? Yes. But if you want five amps and your power supply can provide five amps, you have to negotiate for it. You can't, you can't just draw five amps. So this has an eMark chip in it, which is why it's not just like it's low cost, $2, you know, it's not $2 USB-C cable uh, because it will actually do the proper USB PD negotiation to give you uh, five amps out. Um, an example of a five volt output power supply is like the one for the Raspberry Pi 5. I think that one's a five volt, five amp. So you're going to see more of those five volt, five amp uh, power supplies, USB-C power supplies on the market. If you want to get that five volts out, uh, this cable will do it at five amps. Excellent. We have a couple of cases um, that Noah and Pedro have designed. They're on holiday this week, um, but this is for the Pixel Trinky. So if you are using the Pixel Trinky to control NeoPixels or dot stars from a USB port, but you want to protect your little guy, um, this case has the reset button and the three pin um, accessory port and the terminal blocks exposed, but it's nice and protected. It's a snap fit enclosure, so you don't need a, um, any screws or any glue. It just snaps right on. Um, we're kind of experimenting with like, what if we have yeah. resin printed enclosures for some of our projects um okay. instead of people having to 3d print their own because maybe you don't have a 3d printer so for a couple bucks you know basically we 3d print it for you and put it in the shop um this isn't a translucent white plastic so the neopixel will shine through but otherwise it um it's nice and protective we also have a case uh for the cutie pie so this is like 
Um, well, actually, can you go back so you can see this one? So you can see here at the bottom that uh, Cutie Pie snaps into um, the bottom of the case. There's lots of like mounting slots and holes. There's also a like sombrero hang, so you could hang this up from uh, a nail. Um, there's also ears on the side, so you can turn it into a strap. Basically, if you have a stomach QT project, uh, sorry, a cutie pie project where you have like sensors or maybe a display, um, and you want to make it a little bit more compact and finished and mountable, um, this is a three piece enclosure. Um, on the right, the, stem, uh, the cutie pie board plugs in. Then there's like a little uh, side piece um, to give it a little bit of a you know, three dimensional shape. And then um, on the top, there is uh, the gridded top. And there's slots in it because it's meant to make it easy for you to uh, bolt any display or sensor or um, LEDs or whatever you want onto the out outside. All right, the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and our entire team, the community, our customers, and everyone who's helping us with this big move to our factory upgrade is? Dun, dun, dun. It's a new cutie pie. Um, I, th I personally think this is a, you know, all, I love all the products that we've released for the last couple of weeks. Um, but this one's fun. So this is a cutie pie based on the CH32 uh, V203G6, I think. If you look on the back, I can, it's the G6. Yeah, CH32 V203G6. This is a risk five processor from WCH. It's a very, very low cost chip. Um, it has 10K of RAM, 32K of internal flash. It has an additional 224K of flash memory that's like not one, it's not zero weight. It's like you have to access it externally. It's like QSPY memory, but it's bonded into the chip. Um, it's just like a kind of funky chip. We added teeny USB support for it, thanks uh, to some contributors and tech merged in. We've also worked on making the Arduino support better. Um, it's still like a hacky chip. It's not, you know, for beginners because it's, you know, doesn't have auto reset built in and some peripherals are kind of funky and don't work. Um, uh, but it's a pretty nicely featured microcontroller board. I think there's kind of this future of ultra low cost risk five chips that are going to hit the market. And I thought, you know, people have been experimenting with this board using, uh, CN Lore's, um, CHV2 fun like B00 fun um, repo. And that's great for if you want to use make files. Um, it's never going to run CircuitPython, doesn't have enough memory for it. But I can see people end up like, they might port Lua to this or something. And like I said, Arduino works kind of ish okay. Um, there's like one bug with the USB emulation on Windows, but NeoPixel works. Um, we got that merged in. I squared C does work. SPI does work. Um, you know, analog input works, you know, it's just kind of funky to see a chip that's, you know, basically 40 or 50 cents, right? It's like, you know, half the price of, um, you know, a Cortex M0, but it's like, you know, a, a full peripheral friendly risk five chip. And, uh, yeah, I, don't know. I thought we need to have a little dev board people to, um, experiment with it, especially with the plug and play stomach UT and the bootloader select button and a reset button so uh, plus a neopixel and you know you can um use it as a, a very low cost dev board for this chip which i think we'll see in a lot of projects new, 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 new.